A very warm welcome to the show. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission says about 12 million Nigerians have been added to the voter register at the conclusion of the continuous voters registration exercise. Now, data obtained from INEC as at um, August 1st reveals that about 8.7 million of them are youths, uh, while over 87,000 are persons with disabilities. Now, the electoral body has also raised an alarm on the emergence of a fake online registration site asking Nigerians to enroll for their voters uh, card registration and it says the site emerged from a dubious source and has no affiliation to the commission. The electoral body is asking the public not to fall for the antics of online scammers as the voter registration exercise has been concluded nationwide. And for more on this, we have joining us now Rotimi Oekomi, who's the Chief Press Secretary to the INEC uh, Chairman, uh, Professor uh, Mahmoud Yakubu, and of course we will be joined later on by a guest and electoral activist on the show. Uh, so good to have you uh, join us. I mean, <laughs> these are interesting Thank you for times. Me. Right. And I can see you've printed them here, uh, just like we also have copies. Right. Just tell us the interesting developments you have with this um, new 12 million uh, voters that we have registered, which is different from the 84 million that we took into the 2019 general election as a nation. Thank you very much. Uh, we started this in June last year, and what this means is that between June last year and now, the total number of completed registration is about 12.2 uh, 12 million. But let's not forget that this is not up to what we obtained between 2017 and 2018. Recall that by 2015 general election, we had just under 70 million. And by 2018, just before 2019, we added 14 million new registered voters, which pushed up the register of voters to 84 million. Now we're having, as at the close of the registration uh, yesterday, uh, no, on Sunday, we had 12.2 um, uh, million. Now. We haven't even cleaned the register. We still have to go through certain processes. Uh, we don't know what the figure will be at the end of the day. But when, we, when compared with the last CVR, I think the last CVR had more figures than this one. OK. <laughs> Interesting development there. And I will ask um, how uh, the statistics are uh, different from what you're having in terms of um, when you look at the online voters this time around and those who went for physical registration, I mean, what's been the difference like? Well, um, from the figures, I think it's a bit surprising. You know, when you check when we started, uh, we felt that the online pre-registration will encourage more people to register. And initially, the figures were high, and the figures kept rising. But registering online is different from completed registration, because you still have to come and do the biometrics and complete the process. But as it is, I think when you check the number of those who pre-registered online, that's about 10 million. And now coming to those who actually completed, it falls to about 3 million. So that's a difference on 7 million. You know, that, so it, 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 it be, you begin to wonder what happened to the 7 million. But well, I think that's up to uh, you media to find <laughs> out what happened. We don't know what happened. Yeah. And take us through the registration exercise. I mean, there were lots of, uh, uh, you know, logistics problems that you had and complaints also by a lot of Nigerians that, I mean, the queues were just growing and INEC officials were not doing so much to attend to them. Is it that uh, INEC didn't factor in the sort of surge that may be happening? Why was it difficult? I mean, even if you go to the Abuja INEC office here, you see lots of people staying outside. I mean, in, in other advanced societies, registration is made easier and then card collection even delivered. How, how come as you have to stand, stand on the queue for so long and some are unlucky to get registered? Thank you. Well, when we started, uh, what we noticed was that in the opening months, June, July, August, people were coming in in trickles. Uh, we didn't have the kind of surge we had towards the end. And uh, at that time, I recall that as we progressed, we encouraged people to come and register in good time. Uh, because at that time, there was no pressure, and people could go and just have a walk-in, uh, complete the process, and then leave. You know. But 
towards the deadline, the original deadline we set was June 30, and about three weeks to that time, you started seeing a surge in numbers. Uh, of course, uh, when you have a lot of people turning up, you will now see pressure mounting up at our centers. And we responded, really. It's not as if we didn't respond. First, we postponed the deadline, and then the commission was able to uh, look critically at those areas where there was pressure, uh, places like Lagos, places like Kano, or even the FCT, and the entire southeast states. And we deployed more IVED machines, uh, INEC Botai Roman devices, to these places to help. And our officers from the headquarters also went to help. And there was another critical point. In conjunction with the European Union, we had this youth vote count campaign. Yeah, uh, where which was a massive success right, in Lagos, in Lagos and, and all that. And, and, <laughs> and for, for over a week, we were registering uh, uh, voters and we deployed about 50 machines, including personnel to the race course in Lagos, and it was hugely successful. And at the old parade ground here in Abuja, we did the same thing. So those were extra measures. And of course, we did this in collaboration with the European Union, which is a continuation of what they did earlier. Uh, when we went to six universities in six geopolitical zones to encourage you, young people to, to, to register. I think the, what you see now with more young people having more interest is a fallout of the campaign that had taken place over the past few years. Okay. And then uh, the issue of um, INEC itself not uh, uh, being able to, you know, distinguish the issues of um, you know, specific location. We had an incident in Lagos where some of your officials were found in a church actually registering certain people. I mean, how could that have happened? Uh, isn't it beginning to raise questions as to whether your integrity will not be in doubt ahead of um, the cleanup of the uh, voter registration you've done and then, you know, accusation that uh, it looks like you're not monitoring, monitoring your staff properly? Well, our staff never went to any church. Um, we don't go to churches, mosques, or shrines no, to register voters. actually said they it, it, arrested I, I, some I, of your staff in now the church in we, Lagos. Our Lagos office issued a statement to say that that wasn't true. Uh, it's easy to ascribe certain act, uh, you know, activities to INEC staff. Now, let me say this. We investigated myself when, of course, we, we interact with stakeholders on social media and they send pictures and narratives about, oh, some INEC staff are collecting 500 naira, 1,000 naira to register people at this or this area. So in one of those places, or two or three of those places actually, I was able to contact the REC and the REC immediately mobilized security agents. One was in Ondo, one in the FCT. And when those people were actually arrested, it turned out that they were not INEC staff. And what happened? So how did they get hold of your devices? So, no, no, they didn't get hold of our devices. Some young chaps, you know, with the fair for, the, for technology, went with laptops to our premises and offered to help people do change, uh, request for uh, transfers online. And they were, they were doing that for a fee. So okay, they, based they on claimed, what you had exactly, asked Nigerians to do. Exactly. So maybe so, probably the illiterate ones. So one of them that was caught, I actually spoke to that person. He said that, well, I'm not an INX staff. I'm just here to help and make some money that after all, I brought my laptop, I, I put my data, and I'm not forcing people. I will tell you, if you want to request for transfer and all that, I go to your portal and then I do. He didn't see it as anything wrong. But you see, People started saying, that guy is an INEC star. So that confusion was there. In the instance when we were able to prove in Benue State where some two INEC star were involved in that kind of thing, they were promptly disciplined. They are, they are under interdiction now. So our staff know the code of conduct. They will not engage in anything that um, will tarnish the image of the commission. And I think that majority of what was ascribed to our staff was not what our staff did, but other individuals who wanted to just make some quick money. Uh, so there should be a distinction between what we do and what we don't do. And our, our registered centers are designated. They are public places. They are well known. 
and we and don't, they don't include uh, they don't the palaces of traditional rulers or uh, of religious not. organizations. As so you what I'm saying cheese. is, our, our resident electoral commissioner for Lagos State issued a statement to debunk what was said about some people purportedly registering voters in the church. They were in our next staff. Okay, just before we go on a short break, uh, why did you say you had to close uh, the registration because of PVC production uh, uh, so that you'll be able to meet up before the next general election? Uh, isn't the beaver supposed to just take care of those things without you necessarily having a PVC card? No, we, th there are processes. We, we have to run the whole applications through certain integrity tests. Now, let me tell you what happened. Between June and December, we harvested all the registrations that took place. And in January, the INEC chairman addressed a press conference to give a report of what happened. And it turned out that about 50%, almost 50% of those who registered within that period were invalid registration. Of course, some, a section of the media also misunderstood that. What do we mean by invalid registration? If you had registered once and you register again, the second registration becomes invalid. The original registration remains valid. So these are the kind of things that we need to take out of all those who have registered. And you know, everything happens in stages. We haven't reached a stage yet where we have the technology to you know, run through the, our, our servers and take you out you know that you have registered before right there as we are doing it so it's a gradual process and of course the commission will now be thinking towards that like nigerians are demanding that oh the cvr should truly be continuous we don't need to have break yes we'll get there but it's a it's something that we, we achieve gradually gradual right. okay i'll just ask you to hold on here while we're we'll on a short break and when we come back we'll continue the conversation stay with us Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambo, and of course, we have joining us right now uh, DJ Adeon Ju, who is um, of the is a convener of the Concerned Nigerians, and of course, we still have with us here the Chief Press Secretary to uh, the INEC uh, National Chairman, uh, Mr. Rotimi Oyekomi, right here in the studio with us, and of course, uh, we're discussing about. Uh, the things that led to you shutting down uh, your services before you went on that break. Uh, and just quickly, um, with uh, the end of this um, uh, particular phase now, how soon do we get this register out? I mean, the cleaned version, like you had said earlier. Uh, well, that's up to the commission to determine. Like I said, all the processes have to be completed. But I'm sure that uh, it will be in good time before the 2020 general election. And of course, the commission has promised that from October this year, the PVCs of those who registered, you know, newly will be, will be ready for collection. Uh, for those who registered between June and December 2021, the PVCs are ready and the, the rightful owners are collecting them. Okay. And now we'll come to uh, the distribution of this uh, particular voter register. Uh, DG, I mean, you've seen it. I've seen you tweeting about some of these um, issues and how practical this uh, will affect the 2023 general election. What's been your general observation about the figures so far? Yes, the figures are extremely humbling. Uh, it does not match the social media hype that we are seeing online. Uh, it's, it's pointing towards, towards political structure because how do you explain a situation where Borno, plagued with insecurity, has more figures than Abuja? Kogi has more figures than most states in the southeast where there is the uh, obedient uh, fever. It's catching so <laughs> much, uh, you know, and Lagos, you know, the figures from Kano, Kano with little or no noise, has almost same figure with Lagos. Lagos filled up stadium, made noise, do, did rally, did jamboree all over the place, and they're having same figures with uh, Kano. You know, Sokoto has more figures than some states in the southeast. You know, so it doesn't just, the figures, figures are not adding up to, with the social media hype and the noise and everything. So I'm wondering what is really going on. 
And what, what does this uh, actually portend uh, for the election? Because, I mean, you see, as, uh, from these figures now, silent voters who are just going out there to just go and exercise their, you know, uh, their rights without, you know, uh, making a jamboree out of it, just like you said. But what does this say about the uh, average Nigerian wanting to exercise his uh, uh, right in the 2023 election? How crucial is this election uh, for an average Nigerian? Yes, as students of uh, politics and political history, uh, you know, if we are to go by history, we have seen that even in the recent, uh, the last election in 2019, that Kano had 1.9 million votes, you know, almost practically almost cancelling the, the entire votes in the five southeast states. The southeast states were only able to uh, beat Kano by maybe 200 and some, about close to 300,000 votes. So, we are seeing that the enthusiasm that we have witnessed, especially from Lagos, has not been. I was expecting a million plus new registered voters from <laughs> Lagos, you know, and, and you know, there about then. Again, if you look at what happened in the last general election, where the South South, they even used to produce many votes. A lot of votes could not produce more uh, votes. Look at what the kind of mega figures that Rivers produced in the last election. So, you know, we must. The, the people who have been excited online and offline uh, who do not know that but if you were, if you followed AKT and you followed Oshun, you say that the people who saw voting don't even look like they have social media handles mm. you know and so the political reality in Nigeria and the people that decide votes in Nigeria from time in memory have always been people in rural areas there are no voting uh, centers online either Facebook Twitter or Instagram and also, even though INEC tried to create a registration point online, yes, for people. yes. So <laughs> it is important to point that out. It is also important to stress here that I wish the diasporans were allowed to vote. I wish online voting will become a reality. You'll be able to an eradicate majority of uh, the inadequacies we currently have in the electoral system. Again, I also wish that uh, people can smell the coffee from the figures coming in because. That fig I looked at the fig I have looked at the figures more than twenty something times, and <laughs> all I can see is you know a, a predetermined outcome. Is already what I'm saying because you see, we know vo how people vote in this country and the voting patterns. Yeah, you know, and I want to say that the top five states, uh, based on what we had in uh, 2019 and now. Uh, uh, Lagos with about 7.1 million, followed by Kano with about 6 million, and uh, Kaduna 4 million, 4.4 million, Rivers 3.6 million, Katsina 3.5 million. What does this? Um, what what do these uh, kind of figures uh, tell an average Nigerian voter ahead of the 2023 polls? If you see, you discover that the culture is not the same. Voting culture tolerance culture when it comes to politics, political awareness culture, up north the political culture is almost top notch. You know, if you look at the number of people, look at the register, but look at the number of people that voted in Rivers the last election. You know, it's just unbelievable. The, it doesn't, the figures don't add up. A, a governorship election in Anambra that brought in uh, Soludo, where they win now 100 and something thousand votes, 112 or thereabouts, and the next person got 50 something thousand. And the third place got 40 something. And I think uh, the fourth place, Ivan Yuba, got 21,000. So you can see that those kind of figures, if those kind of figures are reproduced in, 29, in 2023, that the outcome is going to be extremely disastrous. I am already in my mind, I already know that breakfast is going to be served to uh, those who are well, extremely. I, I hope you have to define your breakfast here because we have a lot of young viewers who don't understand. Uh, yes. Uh, when I mean breakfast, I mean, you know, people are extremely excited about the coming elections. I'm excited as well. You know, I'm particularly delighted that uh, uh, the Ududua Republic and the Biafra Republic has temporarily been suspended because of the interest in 2023 election. I hope that these agitations will not resume after the elections. You know, and I hope that people's uh, uh, expectations will not be dashed as a result of the outcome of the election. But from the figures I have seen yesterday that I've been studying, and I've been studying the patterns of voting in the country, you know, I do not see anything significantly changing in 2023. Okay, and I'll come back to you, uh, Rutumi. Um, the 
crucial issue here is that uh, anytime we're having a general election, there are always talks about underage voted in the north and all of that, or the issues of insecurity in the south, specifically the south is not allowing lots of people to come to come out to exercise their vote. All of this affects uh, voter turnout and then it leads to voter apathy and all of that. So how is INEC doing uh, the best cleanup to ensure that, uh, first of all, the issues of underage voting is uh, 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 settled finally uh, that I mean people who are who are under age won't be voting and didn't get registered and then of course how are you working with security agencies to create a conducive environment to prevent voter apathy thank you very much you know uh, social media hypes so many things and when people talk about underage voting they only put post pictures they don't give us raw evidence about where underage voting takes place there was a time when one of the northern states conducted a local government election and several pictures surfaced online claiming that, you know, um, there was underage voting. And people couldn't distinguish between what INEC does and what the state electoral uh, body does. INEC does not conduct, for instance, local government election. We investigated what happened in that particular state and the report is online. We informed Nigeria about what happened. INEC does not register underage voters, you know, that is sure. And those allegations are largely you know, unsubstantiated. And we, I can say that for sure. So let's leave that. Insecurity. We work with security agencies. We meet regularly. And in fact, um, the synergy between INEC and security agencies is so good that if you look at the recent election, Oshun and Nikiti, you find that a lot of commendation was given to the conduct of security agencies because you know over time we looked at the loopholes we look at what people complained about and between INEC and security agent we came up with a conduct a code of conduct for security agents and it's even due for review at the moment and is going to be reviewed so that synergy has helped us to improve the relationship between what security agents do on election day and what voters and stakeholders are expected to do so we think that 2023 will be the best ever election so far in terms of the synergy that we have together now and what's going to happen. Yes, there is no general election that you don't have this threat of insecurity. Uh, is it 2011? Is it 2015? Is it uh, 2019? There will always be threats. But of course, the experts in security management always have a way of dealing with this matter. We can conduct election in chaotic circumstances, but Somehow, God has been so merciful on this country that any time we want to conduct general election, somehow we will be able to, you know, pass through that phase without anything untoward happening. And I believe that with the, with the uh, cooperation of all Nigerians, not just gun and bullets, you know, all stakeholders have a responsibility to ensure peaceful election. 2023 we hold. Well, uh, ANEC has been enjoying lots of uh, commendations since the Oshun election, and uh, at least it's a pointer that um, hopefully when the results of the 2023 polls are out, it will be well accepted. Uh, but I come to you, uh, DG. I mean, let's talk about the issue of INEC and uh, logistics, and then uh, 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 issue of how young Nigerians are getting excited about coming out to vote. But uh, if you look at the election results in 2019, you see that we had 84 million registered voters. Uh, but those who came out on election day, I mean, if you add both Atiku and Buhari's vote and, and the other presidential, it's just about 30 million or at most 31, 32 million. Uh, so in, in all of this, why do we have a surge in voter registration and just when it gets to election day, especially for a crucial election like the presidential election, we'll have the presidential candidates coming home. I mean, how can out of 84 million registered voters, a Nigerian president is emerging with just 15 million? Well, you see, since 1999, the votes have been reducing. And it's because uh, people are not as confident as in the electoral process as they used to be. If you recall that in 2018, there about INEC also commenced voter registration uh, to capture new voters, and new voters were captured, and uh, many of these new voters eventually didn't turn up, you know. And in my view, I I, I do not see a change because currently uh, the the factors that will have encouraged 
serious harmony between the opposition is not there. You recall that the last general election, uh, the opposition was kind of united, only Shore was not with them. And Shawari didn't <laughs> really put up a good outing in the last election. Yeah. But right now, you have APC, uh, government in power on one ha hand. Then you have the PDP fractured into four or three, three or four different units. You have the articulated PDP, then you have the obedience PDP, then you have the, you have the, uh, you have the Kwankwasiya PDP, uh, okay. then you now so have, you now have PDP pro wiki PDP. You understand? So you can see that there's no synergy. Because if when all of them were together, you saw the massive rally that Konkoso had for PDP in 2019 in Kano, it was unprecedented. So we're going to the next election with a divided yeah, opposition. So you, so you are going yeah, into the election with a divided opposition. The opposition will not be able to galvanize votes, you know, in one direction. Uh, oh. the, that the, just like they did during the last general election where Peter Obi was on the ticket, Atuku was on the ticket, Konkoso was uh, in sync. Uh, okay, I'll just ask so, you to hold on there. Uh, just hold on. We'll, we'll go on the short break and when we we'll come back, continue the conversation. You're still watching the Arise interview. Uh, we'll now go on a short break and uh, come back to continue the conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. I'm Somna Sambo and we're still taking a look at uh, the newly added 12 million voters to the nation's uh, uh, voters uh, register. And uh, we previously had 84 million. And then with this uh, 12 million, which is yet to be cleaned up by the Independent National Electoral Commission, we will be expecting uh, to see uh, Nigerians coming out to vote for uh, the best candidates that they've chosen. And uh, INEC had taken a decision earlier on to stop it, but of course a federal high court in Abuja had uh, prevented the commission from going ahead with that, saying that uh, it should go ahead with the voter registration. But later on, things um, got settled, and of course uh, INEC um, eventually made the decision to end uh, the voter registration by uh, by uh, July 34 so as to be able to uh, uh, process the uh, voter register. And of course, uh, still with me in the studio here is um, Sarotimi Oekomi, who is um, the Chief Press Secretary to the INEC National Chairman. And of course, um, we still have Deji Adionju, who is the convener of the Concerned Nigerians um, uh, with us here. Uh, let's, let's talk about the political intrigues, uh, DG, as to how there were, you know, calls on INEC to extend this, and then eventually uh, it, the INEC got caught up in the whole stuff, but later on it got a reprieve, and INEC has ended this, but there's still a call out there that INEC should go ahead and allow people to, to register, even up until, some people would say, up until uh, the last week before election. What do you make of all these calls? Why INEC is saying that, no, it needs time to clean up uh, the new additions and of course uh, process the PVC cards for uh, eligible voters. Yeah, I, I really commend INEC and I, re I really trust them because you know almost government agencies in this country are, are compromised if you look at the way INEC dubiously. It, it, it depends on the, no, 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 I, I, <laughs> the I, facts I, I, that I have, you actually I have. Precedent. have. I have precedent. Uh, okay. You know if you look at the way INEC dubiously extended uh, just uh, when the APC were about to do their convention. You know, uh, INEC did a, a last minute abracadabra to allow APC to extend its activities. So it has already given a template that it, without sustained pressure by Nigerians on INEC, INEC would not have extended this uh, window. However, INEC must be com com commended for the way they handled uh, the Oshun election and the Kiti election. And this particular chairman, has shown that he has the intention to make elections free, fair and credible. You know, despite the fact that there have been several elections under him that have been hijacked. But again, one must be optimistic. However, one must not give too much credit to INEC so that the credit it doesn't get to their head and they just start misbehaving. However, I concede to you that the political intrigues are important, but I must concede to INEC this time around that there must be an end to registration and registration the elections are around the corner registrations cannot be in, indefinite because INEC needs to prepare 12 million is not 200,000 is not 1 million is not 3 million is not 4 million 12 million is a lot of data processing the data 
and providing uh, uh, the hard copies of those uh, uh, voter cards the PVCs. and also the collection. If you know the number of uncollected PVC in INEC, then you will now concede to INEC that we must give INEC the benefit of doubt to be able to distribute these uh, materials in their centers nationwide. So it's a lot of manpower that is, is needed, is required. So it's not just something you can fault INEC on. INEC is spot on on this. Okay. And uh, hey, come here. <laughs> just come back to you. What do you say to this uh, group of Nigerians who insist that, I mean, you can do this? They, they believe that you have the capacity to do this registration up until uh, maybe the last week before, you know, February 25th, when the presidential election will hold. Well, we'll get there someday. We'll get to that level where we'll be able to continue the CVR until uh, close to the uh, general election. But as it were now, it's not possible for us to do that because of the peculiarities of what we need to do uh, before the uh, general election. Now, just take a look at the figure of completed registration that came out of the newly just concluded CVR, 12 million. We have to print 12 million PVCs. If that is the figure that after the cleaning of the register of voters, if that is what the commission eventually comes up with, that's what we have to print. And these PVCs, according to the law, must be configured to a polling unit. You know, you can't use the, your PVC to vote in more than one polling unit. Okay? If you go to a, P, to a polling unit that is not yours, the beavers will reject that and they will ask you to go there. So, this is a lot of work. And we need to understand that it takes, you know, quite a lot of time to do this. We need enough time to be able to do that. And, you know, it, it will be pointless for people to register and then they don't have the PVC to be able to vote because in all our elections... So if you don't have a PVC, you can't vote. Our, according to the Electoral Act, you must have a PVC to be able to vote because that's what identifies you as a voter. And, you know, voting is also not just voting. You must be in Nigeria. There are requirements that you must fulfill to be able to vote. So that is that. And some people compare the PVC to these ATM cards. That, oh, it, you go to a bank, uh, ATM will be produced in, in no minute. It, the configuration is different. We are talking about politics. If only Nigerians know what we have to contend with in the kind of work that we do. And we don't make too much noise. Yeah, and that, that's why I want you to actually assure Nigerians that INEX believability will continue to remain high. In the face of what he just raised, I mean, I mean when INEC extended the uh, uh, closure period for, you know, candidates' uh, nominations to be submitted and all of that, a lot of people felt that, I mean, INEC was favoring the governing APC. Uh, so what do you correction. say? It wasn't an extension, but that is the way the media said about it. You see, uh, went about it. You see, the timetable and schedule of activities for 2020 didn't change. This, the extension people are talking about, there was nothing actually penciled down for that period. So it was like a buffer period. It was like a buffer period. And what the parties were asking for was for 30 day extension. And flatly, the commission said, no, you cannot have that. And they then went and came back to say, okay, in any case, between this date and this date, you don't have any activity. Why don't you give us that, you know, and let us do it? And it was a joint decision by them. And the commission considered and said, well, it was just a period of about two or three or four days. But you see, the media said, oh, it's an extension and all that. People don't know how, <laughs> you know, what... Well, <laughs> the thing is, INEC didn't live up to the date it had fixed. No, no, no. The, the, so the, it, what it I'm shifted is that the date. We didn't shift I mean, the that's, date. I mean, that's on record. <laughs> on, we didn't shift the date. The date in our timetable and schedule of activities never changed by one cent, by one centimeter rather. That's what I'm saying. But of course, people like DG, they don't want to listen to that. <laughs> you know, these are activists, so uh, okay. their mind is well, fixed I on what is... I with what you're saying completely, <laughs> because it's on record, it happened, P PDP was preparing, other political parties, MPP was preparing for convention, Labour Party, people, everybody was preparing. APC was not preparing at all because they were in collusion with INEC. It was obvious. So when, <laughs> when it came on the last minute, because the president was even traveling, he was so relaxed, the national chairman was just having fun, then the thing came, everybody said, ah, 
If a witch cried yesterday night and a child died this morning, who does not know that it was the witch that killed the child? Okay. <laughs> well, just before we end this, I, I want this infograph to be shown where we have the geopolitical spread of all the registered voters at the moment. And uh, I, I just want you to talk to that. If you look at the geopolitical zones um, that we have at the moment in terms of the number of people, and, and I'm still waiting for my producer to actually give me that. Uh, in the geopolitical spread, you see uh, the Northwest is still maintaining its lead as having the highest number of registered voters at the moment. And then it goes on to the Southwest and all of that. What does that mean for, for the nation, I mean, as we go ahead? Yes, just like I said earlier, I say it means breakfast is, is loading, is coming, because it's, it's inevitable that breakfast is going to come. Because, and the reason why breakfast is going to come is that even if you look at the number of polling units per zone in the country, I don't think it's up, up there. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at the number not, of polling yeah. units per zone, you will discover, look yeah, at, yeah, the, I mean, look that, at that, the polling that's units. That's it, yeah. 47, so 41,000 in 40. the Northwest. So you see that all the other uh, zones, Already, this, I mean, look at look at Southeast, twenty one thousand. It cannot catch up on election day. There's no way, scientifically, neither can South South catch up. Neither can even the uh, Southwest catch up. It's not possible. Yeah, I mean, neither can North Central catch up because the availability of people to spread and vote is what determines the volume of votes that come in on election yeah, I mean, day. Uh, this is actually the so, polling unit yes, distribution. So, we, so, we so, if you look at it critically, any candidate that does not target the Northwest or the North East and Southwest. That person is not even in the race. That's why someone like Peter Obi, who is like my preferred, if I was supposed to have a preferred candidate, or Showare, they don't stand any chance in this election. Because I do numbers. I have actively participated well, well, in elections. A lot of them would disagree. A lot no, of no. their supporters would disagree hey, listen, with Listen, I have actively participated, I have actively participated in 39 elections in this country, 17 in Northern Nigeria. And I can tell you off my head, a state like Zamfara, APC is going to win by wide margin, wide. So yeah, I mean, there are so, some other states that no, the Labour no, Party or the PDP will win too. You, you see, you <laughs> see, if we were being serious, mm. if we had a serious opposition, very quickly, before if we had a serious opposition in the country, what you will see is unity of purpose on one hand. Then the mushroom parties like Labour Party, AAC, they will focus. For instance, if Labour Party focuses on producing a governor or two in 2023. It would be a more realistic objective. So, because they don't have governors now, they're a mushroom no, 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 party. No. If, if, no, no, they are a mushroom party. They, they are a mushroom party. <laughs> Labour <laughs> well, Party's national chairman will not, not come on TV and deny that they are not a mushroom oh, party. Well, um, I, I'm very sure they will disagree with you. We must thank you so much, uh, DJ Adi Onju, uh, who is the convener of the Concerned Nigerians. And uh, of course, you've been concerned about all these figures coming out and then uh, helping to enlighten the public because, I mean, a lot of Nigerians are afraid that if uh, these uh, issues are not properly put in, uh, proper perspective, it may lead to a security challenge for the nation because some people may have a lot of heightened expectations and it affects them. I must thank you so much, uh, Ruth Mioyekomi, who's the uh, Chief Press Secretary to the INEC National Chairman for being with us here and of course explaining this in, in detail and of course our viewers uh, will be happy for it. Uh, thank you so much.